Okay, so now that we've got our presets set up and our levels set, um, let's jump into the kick drum. Now, just to let you know, on all of these drums, I'm only using two plugins, you know, besides the presets that have been already put on. So there's only two plugins that we use um, throughout all of our mixing. I rarely use three, almost never four, um, and we'll talk about all of those. So the first plugin that we are always going to be using is the channel EQ. You know, so we're going to be messing with our different frequencies to get the sound we want. The second plugin that I use is the enveloper. So that's what is going to add the punchiness to our drums and things like that. Now, the third plugin that I rarely use, but it is useful, is called the expander plugin. Um, and I usually only use it on the toms. And then the fourth is the compressor. Now, I don't use it as much. The only time I would use it is, you know, if I put it on my snare drum and I'm doing brush work. So, yeah, those are the four plugins. I 99% of the time I'm only using two. And uh, yeah, so the kick drum, what we're going to be doing, so let's pull this up, see what we've got here. Let's actually solo this. Right, so it doesn't sound very good. So what we'll do here is, now you can see on the presets here, the compressor is off, I leave it off. The sub bass is off, now I leave that off as well. I have used the sub bass in the past. It's just basically just gives your kick drum more beefy, a more beefy sound, um, which is good, but I don't use it just because it seems like it always interferes with what I do on the channel EQ. But without further ado, this kick drum is an 18-inch kick drum. So we're trying to get more of a rock sound out of it. And uh, it's a little bit harder to do with an 18-inch 18, 18 kick drum. If you didn't notice, if you're, if you're a little bit more beginner, over here on the left side, the inspector um, tool area, there's this you know wavy-looking thing here. That's the EQ. And it actually, when you hover your mouse over it, Logic usually lets you know that uh, this is the EQ. And so we're going to select that. You can come down here and select this as well. Um, so we'll select that. Now what we'll do, it's got a preset on here, which is good. Um, but usually with the kick drum, I recall to default. So I'll go up to this arrow, select here, then go down to recall default. Let's start with the highs. So I'm going to be playing the kick drum and I'm going to boost the highs. Okay, so we boosted that. Now you can, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I came up here to this corner little button looking thing and I clicked on that. That just cuts off the rest of the high um, frequencies that are going on. Now, this is called a high shelf. You know, when you do it on this side of the EQ, it's called a low shelf. Now, I like every single time I boost one of these areas, I do click on this corner button and you'll want to click on this dot and bring it over just so there's a cutoff. The reason why you do that is because those frequencies, they'll continue on and it just gets muddy as you're mixing other drums down the line and it just interferes with uh, different frequencies and things like that. So, so we've boosted the high and that could change as we, as we get going on. Um, now we're gonna boost the lows here. Right, let me Now what I usually do is I already come up here, click this, bring this over. Now I use this and I'm going to be bringing it across, you know, to where I can find the sweet spot. So let's see here. Cool, so let's cut out the mids. So we're gonna grab this dot looking thing. Now, this is a really a lot of mids that we're cutting out and I don't like that. Um, I mean, it, it could sound good, we can mess with it, but what you'll want to do is, um, as far as thinning that out, you'll always click on this dot. And then what you'll do is come up here and you will select this um, you know, the sides and then you'll thin that out. And so you can see that it doesn't cut out as much. So, 
Um, now let's, uh, what we'll do is we'll mess with this. So. Now, the next thing that we got to do is um, to make this more of a thuddy sound, you know, get rid of, you know, where are we going to get rid of our mid? So we're going to click on this. We'll hold this and we're going to bring it to the left. Um, we're actually going to mess around this area um, to see how that's going to, you know, if we can make it more, you know, just sound better. So yeah, that infinitely sounds better. Pretty sure that was the end, so let me go to the beginning here. Yeah, that's like, I don't really like that, so I'll go back. Yeah, so I'm liking that. Sounds pretty good. Now let's see what it sounds like with everything. That's probably not going to stand out very well. Um, let's see here. So if we turn that off, this is what it will sound like. Yeah, that sounds way better. So now the next step, so we've got the EQ. And now what we'll do is we'll throw on the enveloper. The enveloper basically just adds more punch than what there already is on the kit. Um, so to do that, basically you'll come over here, you'll select, so this is a compressor. I'm gonna replace it with the enveloper. Go down to dynamics and then go over to enveloper and then just select that. Should pop up. Basically all we're messing with on the settings in this thing is we're gonna be boosting the gain here and then messing with this setting right here um, to uh, kind of beef it up as far as, you know, since we're adding punch to this. So uh, let's go to the beginning. Let's see what this sounds like. And it's automatically already. Yeah, so I guess since the way this was recorded, I guess, well, since the way that we EQ'd this, um, we don't need to add too much, you know, envelope. Or if we do, then it gets really, really clicky sounding. Um, and if you're into that, that's that's fine. I like the metal bass drum sound, so um, I'm super into it. And so basically what I did is I increased this gain here. That just increases the snappiness of it. And then to make it, you know, a little bit, you know, so the sound is round, round you know so it flattens that out um, or widens that sound out um, you'll mess with this setting here so that's all that I mess with um, so we can hear see what it sounds like without that so that's with it this is without it you can see how it's a little bit more snappy and you're gonna want that as as we go and mix other drums you know down the line you're gonna want that and so Basically, that's how you mix the bass drum. Now, I know that as we mix the snare, the toms, the overheads, um, as we mix everything, we're going to come back and we're going to do another pass through. We're going to do a, do a tune up, basically, if we need to add on another EQ or things like that. We might not need to, but sometimes we do. Um, just as we mess with these other frequencies, um, you know, adding EQ on each one of these drums, um, you're going to see that, you know, there's, you'll, it might be, you know, the kick drum might not sound as punchy as it did before. So anyways, that's basically how we do the kick drum. And uh, let's move on to the snare.